Dune is a well-recognized masterpiece of science fiction by Frank Herbert, and this saga, set in a distant future, intertwines politics, religion, and power within a galaxy where space travel depends on the most intriguing and mysterious figures, the Guild Navigators. Join me as I navigate through the evolution of these characters from the pages of Herbert's novel to their various screen adaptations and explore why they are conspicuously absent from Denis Villeneuve's recent films. In the universe of Frank Herbert's Dune, the Guild Navigators are initially shrouded in mystery, recognized for their indispensable role in space navigation. The first novel introduces us to these enigmatic figures, emphasizing their critical function in allowing space travel through their unique ability to fold space thanks to the spice melange. Their power places them at the heart of the interstellar economy and politics, wielding immense influence from the shadows. It isn't until Dune Messiah, the second novel of the series, that Frank Herbert provides a vivid description of the Guild Navigators. Here, we learn of their profound mutations caused by prolonged exposure to the spice. The Navigators have transformed into beings far removed from their human origins, described as an elongated figure, vaguely humanoid with thin feet and hugely fanned, membranous hands a fish in a strange sea. This striking evolution underlines the lengths to which humanity has gone in its reliance on the spice, as well as the navigator's transcendence into almost otherworldly creatures. Their prescient abilities, a result of the spice's influence, enable them to navigate to complex and perilous paths of space, maintaining their monopoly over space travel and reinforcing their indispensability in the galactic order. By detailing their roles in the first book and expanding upon their physical and functional transformation in the second, Herbert not only cements the Guild Navigator's significance within the Dune Saga, but also explores the broader themes of evolution, power, and the consequences of humans' dependence on the spice melange. In David Lynch's 1984 film adaptation, the Guild Navigators take on a more dynamic and visually striking appearance. The movie presents a navigator in its third stage of mutation, a large, slug-like creature encased in a glass tank filled with orange spice gas, emphasizing its alien nature. This adaptation stays true to the concept of their advanced evolution and their critical role in space travel, while also highlighting the grotesque beauty and cost of their power. The TV miniseries Frank Herbert's Dune opts for a less grotesque portrayal of the navigators. They are depicted as humanoid with subtle fish-like features, maintaining some level of their original human appearance. The 2003 miniseries Children of Dune changes their appearance again, but still stays true to Herbert's vision from Dune Messiah. This series focuses more on their role and less on their mutation, presenting them in a way that's accessible to a wider audience while still honoring their unique position within the Dune universe. In the latest adaptations by Denis Villeneuve, the Guild Navigators are notably absent from both Dune Part 1 and Part 2. The decision to exclude the Navigators thus far might be rooted in the director's vision to focus on the journey of Paul Atreides and the immediate political, ecological, and cultural conflicts surrounding the planet Arrakis. And here's what the director had to say about it in an interview at Empire Online with Ben Travis back in November 2021. When asked, among the Imperial delegation, are the people in masks guild navigators or guild representatives at all? 
all? Denny responds, they were guild representatives. They were not navigators. We don't see the navigators in this first part. That was one of the challenges of this adaptation. I was trying to keep mystery alive as much as possible. We don't show the Emperor. We don't see the spacing guild navigators. There's a lot of characters that are mentioned or that are in the background that we don't see right away. I tried to keep all the space traveling as mysterious as possible, like almost bringing some kind of mysticism or sacred relationship with that part of the movie. Everything involving space is just evocated and very mysterious. The Guild Navigators are a fascinating aspect of the Dune universe, embodying the themes of evolution, power, and the consequences of humanity's reliance on the spice. From Herbert's original descriptions to various screen adaptations, these beings captivate our imagination, reminding us of the limitless possibilities within the realm of science fiction. Now, with Denny's grand vision that he brings to every movie, I would have loved to have seen what his version of the Guild Navigators would have been. Part one, part two, he's telling a different story and everything that he shows us and he tells us in that movie is already absolutely amazing. These two films have basically become two of my favorite sci-fi films of all time already. Let me know what your first exposure to the 1984 Dune was like and you know, if there's anything different that you miss from that version.